Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas presented by Dynamic Striking. I'm Ken Rideout, joined as always by my friend and boxing hall of famer, the great Teddy Atlas. Today's fight plan is brought to you by our friends at MyBookie. Check them out at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code ATLAS for 50% credit on your first deposit. We're back home today in the Trinity Boxing Club in Lower Manhattan. We're going to break down the Canelo Alvarez versus Dimitri Bivol fight. I'm looking forward to this one. Teddy, what are you looking for from both guys? Well, the first question to me is that by the time this shows, by the time it plays, these somebody would have already come and dropped her eggs. <laughs> so the question for me is whether or not it's possible that the golden goose of boxing, Canelo, can lay an egg during Cinco de Mayo. And if Bebo could be the man to make him do that. So there's only one way to find out, to go in there with a man that never lays an egg, never. He makes sure. You ready? Ready. All right. There's pressure on you now. I'm ready. Don't lay that pressure's egg. Pressure's a privilege. It is a privilege. Let's go get it done. All right, Teddy. So we got the golden goose, Canelo Alvarez, back in action, stepping up for a big one here against Dimitri Bivol. What does Bivol have to do to win this fight? And can he win the He's fight? He's got a box. He's got to be him. I mean, here's the trick. He's the naturally bigger guy, the light heavyweight. He ain't gonna win by being the naturally bigger guy because guess who's really bigger and stronger and more physical? I don't know why, maybe he got on a <laughs> real good weight program, really. Or maybe it's the Mexican burgers over there in that, that joint where, you know, he's been hanging out sometimes and getting that, that beef uh, that makes you a little bigger. I'm not sure. All I know is now, he is no longer, he being Canelo, the smaller man. Even though he's a guy who used to be junior welter and then, and then welter and, and junior middle and middle and then super middle, he's a light heavyweight now. He's thick, he's strong, there's no going back. So that's where you start, that you understand because you have to know what you're up against and what you are. He's no longer the bigger guy, so he's not gonna win a strength contest of backing the guy up, backing Canelo up. He ain't that guy. The naturally bigger guy, Bevo, is not the stronger guy in this fight anymore, or even the bigger guy when it comes to that. So he's going to have to outbox him, and that's his temperament. That's Bevo's nature anyway, to be cautious, to be careful. He's really, he puts a clinic on technically, where he goes in and out. There's two things that he needs to win this fight, and they are his greatest assets. His legs, I know you got good legs, right? That's why you're here. That's why you're here. His legs and his jab. That's, that's what wins for people. And of course, his mind. He's very cerebral. He's smart. As I said, he's technically, he puts a clinic on. He likes to go in and out. Uh, he, he likes to dominate with the jab, set everything. If you wait too long, he'll get off first. If you reach in, he'll counter. Every once in a while, he'll jump in with a left hook. Every once in a while. You better be careful with that because Canelo could time him. He's very good at timing. But we'll get to Canelo's stuff later on. Right now, what does Bevo do to win? So understand your opponent, their strengths, their flaws. One thing that Canelo, his improvement has also been, I think, a flaw if someone takes advantage of it. What do I mean by that? He learned from Mayweather to move his head more. And he does, and he's improved Canelo. He's done a tremendous job, he really has. And sometimes he'll get himself either in the middle of the ring or near the ropes, where he'll put on that kind of defensive clinic like a Mayweather did, almost like he's showing off, like he likes it, you know? Yeah. And he, he's, but he goes defensive too long, a little too long, without throwing back. That's one of the spots that Beaver's gonna win this and get a decision, which in itself isn't gonna be easy being that he's the golden goose with these judges. If he's gonna do that, he's gotta take advantage of such things. Matter of fact, go here, go, go right against the ropes. So, he's, he goes in, you know how to go into that Mayweather mode, the dipping and doing and slipping and sliding. What, when he's there, he's gotta take advantage of that moment, to steal the moment on the judges' cards, to move his hands, get his hands up, put them together. Now, he might miss some, because the head's moving. 
but the body doesn't move. So bang, 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 and then step to the side, bang, bang, step to the side off of it. Why? So he can't counter back. So again, when he goes into that juking and duking on the ropes like that, looking real good, move your hands, bam, bam, go there, bam, step to the side, bang. So he can't counter back. Take advantage of those moments. Score some points. Get to the body a little bit. If you do that, well, say a prayer to the, that the judges are fair to you too. That might not hurt. But if you do that consistently, and you also use your jab, you gotta dominate with that jab. You gotta dominate with it, in and out, do some countering, show them a little count. Where I'll use the jab, I'll get out. Sometimes i either leave you behind or maybe you'll reach with the right hand. Maybe I can entice you to reach a little bit. He's good technically, but he'll reach once. So go out and go, bang, bang. He's good at countering. In other words, know who you are. In and out, smart. Don't stand your ground with him too long. There are like little spots where if he's standing in front, bah, 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 but then get out of dodge. All right? You do that again. Still say a prayer that the judges don't rob you. That's how Beaver wins. All right, Teddy, we talked about what Beaver has to do. What does Canelo have to do to get the victory against uh, Beaver? As always in this sweet science, know what you're dealing with. Know what your opponent's strengths and weaknesses are. And for that, in the strength department, that starts with Bevo, his jab, and his legs. Take away one or both of those, you got a damn good chance of winning the fight because he's a boxer. And no better way to take some air out of the radios <laughs> than to go down here to the body. So that's one thing. Uh, and I'll show it real quick, where obviously Canelo, he's a good body puncher. And he doesn't waste too many punches. He's, he's always usually pretty good with his legs in position to throw solid shots. And now he's put on that bulk. Uh, he, he's a, he was always a decent puncher. He's a better puncher, a better puncher now. So whether it's to slip a jab to, to get in position or it's, whether it's when Bevo is defensive, Whatever it is, like throw the jab at me. Uh, no, throw it straight. Throw, yeah, go ahead. So, slip, so, bang. There you go, okay, throw it at Oh, bang. Go to the body. Whether he gets him to jab and he slips, he goes down to the body. But something to take the air out of those tires. So he doesn't continue to motor wherever he wants to around the ring. The other thing that Canelo has to be cognizant of is that he's, he's very good at timing. He doesn't get enough credit for this actually, where he's got a good instinct, a good sixth sense of your will, Canelo, where he'll kind of get a little bit in the pocket or just a little outside the pocket even. And if you're throwing the punches maybe quicker than him, which guys are faster than him, some guys, uh, he will time you, not match you, but with the punch at the right time. There's a science to that where you throw not just any punch, you throw the right punch at the right time. So there'll be spots where Beaver likes to use his legs, likes to go in and out, likes to use his jab, and after he goes in and out, he likes to come in real quick, like go out, he'll come in real quick, and then he'll throw a real quick combination. Yeah, boom, 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 go make it a combination, three punches, boom, boom, good. He'll do something like that. While he's doing that, if he gets that opportunity to have Bevo in a stationary position, not off to the races, he will look to take advantage of that, or he should, to be able to time him right there. So you go out, come in, you throw those punches, and pop, pop, just time it, do it again. Just go, and then, bang, bang, just at the right time, play something. He, again, he's damn good at doing that. The other thing is, the jab. Bevo's going to try to dominate with the jab. I got news for you. Canelo's got a damn good jab. He does. It's hard. It's accurate. It's, it's straight. It's stiff. It reminds me a little bit 
of George Foreman when he fought Frazier. Yeah, he knocked out Frazier with the uppercut and, you know, everything. But he stabilized Joe Frazier on the outside with his jab, which was like a tree trunk. I mean, George. And Canelo's is like the light heavyweight version of that tree trunk, where it's really strong. Boom! He just, and it's accurate. And he's not going to match. He's not going to match the amount of jabs that Beaver's going to throw. But his jab, when he throws it, can count more. And it can stabilize Beaver, which is what he wants to do on the outside, where Beaver will be out there looking, he could slip, bang, bang, bang. Just stay, even if he throws it to the chest, just to stabilize the movement, bang, where he's not able to move and get him out of sorts. And the last thing that I noticed that I think Canelo should take advantage of where Bevo makes a mistake. He goes straight back. Yeah, he's good at going in and out. He is. But he'll go back more than one step. See, I don't teach fighters to go back more than one step. You go back one step, you counter. You move to the side. You move your head. That's it. One ticket per customer. <laughs> you don't go back two, three, four in a row. Because I always would say to my fighters, if, if a train was coming at you on a railroad track, would you keep going back? I think you get off the freaking track, right? Exactly. Or the train would get you off the track. Then that's not good. So he likes to go, he'll go, he'll go out, but then he'll go out again and again. So when he does that, well, Canelo knows what to do. Use that jab, double it up. Bang, bang, close that gap. And then when you close the gap, finish with the right hand or to the head, go back, bing, bing, bang, or to the body. Either way, set the table with the jab, finish and go eat with the right hand. Catch him on that track, going backwards. If Canelo does that, well, you know, we're gonna have some more golden eggs. <laughs> A few more golden eggs for people out there that like golden eggs. Who doesn't like golden eggs when they're 14? No, actually 24 karat. All right, Teddy, for the guys at my bookie and the people that like to place a wager on the fights, the line on this fight is Bevel plus 320, which seems shocking to think of an undefeated light heavyweight champ at that big of an underdog, and Canelo at minus 420. What do you like? Well, listen, I'll take a shot. I think, I think at the end of the day, I'm not surprised it's so high because it's one thing to beat him in the ring. Canelo, the Golden Goose, right? It's another thing to beat him with these guys that sit over here with the pencils <laughs> in their hands. You know, that's, that's another one. Yep. <laughs> that's the thrill in Manila. Yep. That, that's what that one is. So I understand it. Um, I'll take a, but I'll take a... Leap of faith or a flyer, whatever you want to call it. At, at those odds, I'll put a couple beans. You know, you don't want to bet with anything that you can't afford to lose. Uh, I'll, I'll put a few beans with those odds on Bevo. You know, uh, not expecting to win. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying if, I, if, if somehow, you know, the, the heavens open up and, you know, something happens there and the, and the judges are struck with some bolt of... Integrity. Honesty. <laughs> you know, something along those lines. Uh, I, I'll be there to collect. Uh, is there an under over? I haven't seen one posted yet, but let's assume it's probably nine and a half rounds. At nine and a half rounds, what do you think? Over, under. Oh, I, I, if it's that, uh, it makes it easier for the over. Because I would think if they did come up with a line, it would be even higher. Yeah. I, I would think it would be like 10 and a half. Okay. And so if it was that, I'd definitely go. Either way, I, I would give a shot. Uh, listen, it's not, I can see Canelo possibly stopping him. Uh, he's, like I said, he's a, he's a big guy now. He's a good body puncher. He's improved a lot. He knows how to time you. If he could take away the legs and the jab uh, to a certain extent of Bevo, He's got enough time to get to him. But I'm, I'm going to say that I think it goes rounds. Bevo's a really good boxer. He's a champion of his own right. Uh, he, you know, so I, and, and getting back just before we close this to just betting the, the side straight up. Yep. Again, I, uh, for the people that are saying right now as they're listening to me, Teddy, but you like Canelo. Yeah, I like Canelo. I think he's going to wind up winning. But I wouldn't be shocked if people won. But I'm still not going to lay that kind of money 
on Canelo. I'm yeah. not gonna just lay that kind of wood. So there you have it, kid. There you have it. Evil plus 320 over going rounds. MyBookie.ag, use the promo code ATLAS, 50% credit on your first deposit. Good luck.